الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد الشاكرين وأفضل الصلاة وأكمل السلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وألا آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم Alhamdulillah, this is the second lesson and previously we initiated the class with some rules. Who remembers which rules were covered? Who remembers which type of jumla we began with? We covered that there were two divisions of the jumla. We have the jumla khabariya and the jumla insha'iya and the second division was of Jumla Fi'liya and Jumla Ismiya and we began by discussing the Jumla Ismiya and in relation to the Jumla Ismiya we mentioned that it is a sentence which consists of two components which are the Mubtada and Khabar and both the Mubtada and Khabar will always be in which state? In Marfu state and the Mubtada generally speaking will be Ma'rifa and the khabar generally speaking will be nakira and also there was another principle which I taught you that if after a ma'rifa a nakira occurs if after a ma'rifa a nakira occurs then that ma'rifa will be considered mubtada and the nakira will be considered a khabar now if it was the opposite way round okay if it was that the nakira occurred first, the nakira occurred first, and the ma'rifa occurred later, the tarkib would then be of mudaf mudaf ilay. So if the nakira comes first and then the ma'rifa, the tarkib will be of idafa. And if the ma'rifa occurs before the nakira, so first we have the ma'rifa and then we have the nakira, then the tarkib will be of mubtada and khabar. Insha'Allah Ta'ala we will do a few examples today and remember I did request that you memorize the seven types of ma'rifa, the eight types of uh, mabniyat, the ism ghair mutamakkin and the twelve types of the ism ma'rab. Today we will introduce the seven types of ma'rifa, maybe the mabniyat also. From the next lesson onwards we will also include the twelve types of the ism ma'rab. Muhammad Rasul Muhammad Rasul Right Who will do tarkeeb of this based on the principles which you've just been taught? First tell me the term Muhammad Is it Ma'rifa or Nakira? Ma'rifa Why is it Ma'rifa? Which type of Ma'rifa is it? Ism Alam And Ism Alam is one of the Seven types of ma'rifa. Sign. Rasul, is it ma'rifa or nakira? Why is it nakira? Because none of the seven types of ma'rifa are present. Is Rasul a name in this case? No. Rasul is not the name of anyone. Is Rasul Mu'raf bil lam? Does he have an alif lam? Is he a damir? Is he an isa mawsul? No. Is he an isa mishara? Mu'raf bil idafa? No. None of those seven things. So because we find none of those seven things present within this word, this word is considered nakira. If a ma'rifa comes first and then a nakira occurs, what did we say the tarkib would be? Mubtada and khabar. So we know that this is the mubtada. Khabar. So the Mubtada and Khabar will always be in a certain state. Which state is that? Marfu state. So how will we read Muhammad Rasul? Who will have an attempt? Raise your hands and I'll pick out insha'Allah. Sabil. Muhammadun Rasulun. Why Muhammadun Rasulun? Because they are in the Marfu state. 
and dhammatain is an alamatul raf. It's a sign of being marfu. Also bear in mind that when you say Muhammadun, this is Tanween, and after Tanween, if any of the letters of Yarmulun occur, Ra is one of them, then you do Idgham, so you combine Muhammadur Rasulun. Muhammadur Rasulun. The Mubtada and Khabar then become which type of Jumla? The Jumla? When translating the Mubtada and Khabar, we will bring either the term is in between or are, A-R-E. So how would we translate this? We'll bring the term is in between them. So how would you translate it? But in this case, you'll bring an uh, A also, okay? Muhammad is a messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Which type of jumla is this? Is it khabariya or insha'iya? It is a jumla ismiya khabariya. Right. Muhammadun Rasulun. Now we need to describe which type of Arab is present on this. Which type of Arab? Yes, you said it's marfu, but is it marfu lavan? Is it marfu taqdiran? Is it marfu mahallan? Now these are three terms which all of you should write down. Right, marfu lavan. You can remove the term marfu. Okay, generally speaking, there are three types of Arab. Lafzan, taqdiran, and mahallan. Or lafzi, taqdiri, and mahalli. If the sign, so in this case, we, say, we are saying this is marfu. If the sign of it being marfu, if the alamat al raf is present within the wording, then we will refer to it as marfu lavzan. Okay. For example, jaa zaydun. So when speaking, are we able to read the alamatul raf? Are we able to say zaydun? Yes. yes. Therefore, this is considered marfu lavzan. Another example. The term Musa, Jaa Musa. Which type from the twelve types of Islam Arab is this? Does anyone remember which type from the twelve types of Islam Arab this is? Hamza. Ism Maksur, and the Arab for the Ism Maksur in all three states are Taqdiri. A what? So a change has taken place. But the change isn't apparent in wording. The change has taken place, but you can't see it. It's not apparent in wording. <coughs> this is what we refer to as taqdiri, concealed or hidden. So jaa Musa here, it is also marfu. Why? Because it's a fa'il. After a fa'il, there occurs a fa'il. Kullu fa'ilin marfu'un. Every fa'il is marfu. So the term Musa here is marfu. However, it's not apparent in the wording, yet the change has taken place, the change is hidden, the change is concealed, hence we refer to it as marfu taqdiri. Marfu taqdiri. An example of mahalli. Ja'a hadha. Is hadha mabni wa mu'arab? Mabni wa mu'arab? Which type of mabni? It's an ism ghair mutamakkin, which is mabni. Which type? Ism? Ishara. Now, with the mabni word, change does not take place. Change? So the difference between a mu'rab and mabni is that mu'rab is such a word which changes due to the effect of the amil. So in this case, Zaydun, the change was apparent. Musa, the change was hidden, but a change took place. In this case, Hadha, 
No change took place at all. No change. So mabni is a fixed word which does not budge. It does not change. It will remain hadha at all times, whether it's mansub, whether it's marfu, whether it's majroor, it does not change. So this what we refer to as is mahalli. What? Mahali. And because it's a fa'il here, it's marfu. So marfu, mahallan. Marfu, mahallan. Because mahal means that area. So this area is of. Uh, this area deserved an alamatul raf. This area should have had an alamatul raf. However, mabni does not change, therefore, we will never be able to witness such a change on such words. So now, here we have Muhammadun Rasulun. Muhammadun Rasulun, are you able to pronounce the alamatul raf? Yes. yes. So, is this marfu mahallan, marfu lavzan, or marfu taqdiran? Marfu lavzan. Rasulun marfu lavzan also because you are able to read. So Muhammad is a messenger. This is the first example. You can remove this. Right, Hasib being a name, Alim, scholar. Is Hasib Ma'rifa or Nakira? It's Ma'rifa. Which type? Alam. It's a Ma'lam. Alim is Ma'rifa or Nakira? So what will the Tarkib be? Ma'rifa and then Nakira? So if a Nakira occurs after a Ma'rifa, the Tarkib will be of? Mubtada and Khabar. Mubtada and? Khabar. Now in reality the term alim is an ism file and within it it's a file. So the ism file has a file within it and then it becomes a ship jumla, there's a separate uh, tarqib for this. However, for now we will stick to the basics and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willing we will uh, further delve into that. So hasibun alimun. We have a ma'rifah and an akira, the tarqib will be of mubtada and khabar. And mubtada and khabar are in which state? They in marfu. Okay, how would you read this? Hasibun alimun. Why? Because they're both marfu. So, is it marfu mahallan takdirun or lavzan? Both lavzan. Okay. Mubta da. Khabar Then What will it become? Jumla Ismiya Okay How would you translate it before we carry on? Yes, what's the question? Alright Okay Mubtada and Khabar So how would you translate this? Hasib is an alim. Hasib is a alim. scholar. Is an alim. That's right. So now, can one declare this sentence as true or false? It's okay. If you make a mistake, you can have a guess. Sorry. Yes, he can be declared. If he's an alim, then he then he will say yes. If he's not an alim, then he will say no. It's false. Hasib is a scholar. Hasib is an alim. Which type of jumla is it? Khabariya or insha'iya? Khabariya. Can one declare it being true or false? Yes. yes. If he is an alim, then you will say true. If he is not an alim, you will say no. false. So it can be, it's a, such a sentence which can be declared as true or false. Therefore, it's a jumla ismiya. Khabariya. Now I won't be doing the tarqib. Now we'll pick individually. I'll pick people to do the tarqib. Jamil here 
means beautiful, okay? It's not a name. What does Anta mean? You. Jamil means beautiful. We'll start off with Abdul Jalil. Is Anta, is Anta Marifa or Nakira? It's Marifa. Which type of Marifa is it? It's an Ism Damir. Jamil, is it Marifa or Nakira? Nakira. Why? Because none of these seven types of ma'rifa are found within this word. So we have a ma'rifa, then we have a nakira, so now we know which form of tarkib it will be. Mubtada and khabar. Which state are the mubtada and khabar always in? In the rough east state. Here, how would you read this though? Anta. This is mabni. Say so the change did you will not see a uh, an alamat al raf on this. You will not see a pesh on it. You will not see a dhamma on it. Why? Because it's mabni. Mabni with what? Yes. This is mabni ala al fath. So anta will always remain anta. Regardless of which state it's in, it will always remain anta. So this is mabni ala al fath. Right. So, which type of marfu is it? Which type of Arabic? You'll say taqdiri, lavzi, or mahalli? Uh, that's, uh, because it's mabni, it's uh, mahalli. Right. So, because it's mabni, this word will be considered marfu. Mahali. Why marfu? Because it's a mubtada. But we cannot see that change here because the change did not take place. Right? Because mabni does not change. This is mabni al al fat. It will always remain with a fat. Right, so this is marfu mahallan, marfu mahallan. Right. How would you read the term Jamil? Jamilun. Jamilun. Why did you read it Jamilun? Because this is more of the Kambi saying it's in the rough estate. Why is it in the rough estate? Because it's Muttara Khabar. Yeah, because the Khabar is always marfu. Well done. How do you translate that? Yes. Yeah, so like I said, sometimes you bring the term is, sometimes you bring the term are. You are beautiful. Say it together. Jazakallah. Anta Jamil. Mubtada. Khabar. Right. Mubtada and Khabar. Which Jumla is it? If I miss out or dot or anything, can let me know. Right. Jumla is me, but now is it khabari or insha'iya? If I am beautiful, then it's true. If I'm not, then it's. But we all know the answer to this one. It's khabariya. Jumla is me, khabariya. Is that clear? Jamilun is marfu. Lafzan taqdirun mahallan Abdul Jalil. Jamilun. Is it which? Uh, um, yes. Marfu Lavdan, why? Because you can read it. So this is Marfu Lavdan T. That's fine. I want everybody to write another principle down before continuing. If after a Ma'rifa, we know that if after a Ma'rifa and Nakira occurs, the Tarkib will be Mubtada and but now what if a ma'rifa occurs after a ma'rifa? The tarkib will be of mawsuf and sifa. Is the mawsuf the matbu or the tabi? Mawsuf. Mawsuf is the matbu and sifa is the tabi. What do we mean by matbu and tabi? Matbu is that which is followed in terms of arab and the tabi is that which follows. If after a ma'rifa, a ma'rifa occurs. If after a ma'rifa, another, ma then the tarkib will be of mawsuf and Jizra. likewise. If after a nakira, another nakira occurs, the tarkib will be of mawsufifa. It's important to take into account that if after, if there's two or three ma'rifa, if there's two or three nakiras which have come together, if there's two or three, 
or four or five, they all can be mausuf and the first one be mausuf and the rest can be sifat. Agar ma'rifa ke baad ma'rifa hai, to tarkib umuman mausuf or sifat ki hoti hai. Thik hai? Mausuf sifa. Pehle hamne parata ke agar ma'rifa ke baad nakira hai, to tarkib mubtada or khabar ki hogi. Lekin agar ma'rifa ke baad ma'rifa hai, ya nakira ke baad nakira hai, to umuman tarkib mausuf or sifat ki hogi. Ha, agar teen, char, panch nakiron ke baad koi ma'rifa a jai, wahan pe tarkib idafat ki hogi. Remember this, if there's like two or three nakiras, but then a ma'rifa occurs at the end of them, then the tarkib day will not be a mausul sifa, rada of mudaf mudafile, mudaf mudafile, and so on. Tarkib of idafa. However, there can be more than one sifa for one mausuf. Right? So if three or four ma'rifas come together, the first will be mausuf and the others can be sifat. Likewise with the nakira. Agar ek nakira ho, aur uske baad teen char nakira baad, uske baad bhi aayin, teen or char nakira. Wo uske sifat ban sakti hain. Thik hai. Right, you understand that? Good. Let's do one example. Right, I will point somebody out. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes, okay. Don't worry about that. We learn from our mistakes. Let's begin with... Who shall I point out? Who shall I point out? Who wants to go? Hamza? Yes? Everybody listen. Hamza. Is Bakr Ma'rifa or Nakira? Which type of ma'rifa? Ism, alam. We have a ma'rifa here. Tifl, is it ma'rifa? Bakar is a name, so it's an ism alam. Tifl just means child. Sagir means small. Tifl, is it ma'rifa or nakira? It's nakira. So now we have a ma'rifa, and what's occurred after it? A nakira. So according to the first principle which we studied, if a nakira occurs after a ma'rifa, why is it tarkib? Mubtada and Khabar. So now we already know that this is Mubtada. This is Mubtada. We figured out this is Mubtada and this is Khabar. Right. Is Tifl Marifa Nakira? He said it's Nakira. Sagir is Marifa Nakira? This is also Nakira. So now we have a Nakira coming after a Nakira. And if a Nakira and Nakira come together, the Tarkib is of? Mausuf and Sifa. Right. Some people when doing the Tarkib, they may consider Tifl as the Mausuf, Sagir as Sifa, and then combine the two and make it Khabar. Now we must remember that in Nahab we focus on a Arab. We focus on a Arab. The term Sagir, how would you read it? First read the sentence and then inshallah I will read the sentence. Bakrun Tiflun Sagirun. You read Bakrun as Bakrun because is Mubtada. You read Tiflun as Tiflun because is Khabar. But is Sagir the Khabar? No. no. So to say that Mausuf and Sifa together become Khabar, this is actually incorrect. This is incorrect. Because this is not Marfu because of it being a Khabar. Rather, the actual, the most sound way of doing Tarkib is to consider the first word the Khabar and Sagir is Marfu. Why? Not because it's Khabar. Why is it Marfu? Because it's a Sifa. Sifa for what? The Mausuf. It's a Sifa for the? Mausuf. And the Sifa must correspond with it. So this is Marfu. Not because it's Khabar, but rather because it's the Tabi. It's the follower of the word before it, which is the Matbu. Remember the Mausuf is always the Matbu. Mausuf is always? Matbu. 
and this sifa is always the tabi. Like we have the tabi'un, they follow the sahaba, the atba'u tabi'in, right? The tab'u tabi'in, those who follow the tabi'un. Likewise, um, so without comparison, the term in terms of wording, the sifa is a tabi of the matbu of the mausuf. The sifa follows the mausuf in Arab. The sifa follows the mausuf in. So why are you saying sagirun here? Why? Is it because it's khabar? No. 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 Where's the khabar? The khabar is tiflun, and this is a sifa of the khabar. This is the. So because it's fa because the sifa is a tabi, the sifa is a one which follows in Arab, it's matbu. It will follow the mausuf in terms of Arab. So because the mausuf is marfu, this is also. So the correct terkib is that bakrun is mubtada and tif tif tiflun is khabar, and then also mausuf and sagirun is just a sifa. Is a sifa tabi. Let's have Zainul Abidin up here, inshallah. Come here. Zain Abidin, come here. So now Zain will follow me, right? Come on, Zain, follow me. Right. So now he is following me. What will he be referred to as? A tabi. And the one who is being followed is the matbu. Okay. Now you walk. I follow him. I pray that he's taking me to paradise, inshallah. In this case, who's the tabi and who's the matbu? I'm the tabi because I'm the one following and he is? Okay, so here the tabi is that which follows its matbu but in terms of something specific which is Arab. Even though we know the Masul Sifa correspond in 10 things but that's a separate issue. Khair, that's sufficient for this example. Done. We had the example that we just had on the board, Bakrun Tiflun Sagirun. How would you translate this? Bakr is a small child. When translating the mausuf and sifa, if they're both nakira, then one should translate the sifa first. So in the previous example, how did you, how did you translate the mausuf sifa? Small child. So the sifa was translated first. Or you can bring the term who in between. Right? And if they're both ma'rifa, then you should bring the term who is or whose or who. Okay. So for example, I say Ja'a Bakrunil Alimu. Ja'a Bakrunil Alimu. Bakr is ma'rifa because it's an ism alam. And Al Alim is also ma'rifa because it's Ma'arif bil Lam. There's an Alif Lam in the beginning. So how would I translate that? Zaid, who is an Alim, came. Zaid? Who is an alim came or who's an alim came? So when they're both ma'rifa, you bring the term who's or who is. And when they're both nakira, then you can bring the term who there as well. But it's best, generally speaking, that you translate the sifa first. Okay. Let's do another example. Bakr al Fadil Rajul Salih. Bakr being a name, al Fadil, the expert. Rajul, man, Salih, pious. Is Bakr Ma'rifa or Nakira? Which type? Ism Alam. Al Fadil is a Ma'rifa or Nakira? Which type? Mu'arraf bil Lam. Right. This Jumla, this sentence, has begun with an ism or a fail and one of the de definitions of Jumla Ismiya we covered was a sentence which begins with an ism so now we know that which Jumla is this going to be? a Jumla Ismiya right so what comes first in a Jumla Ismiya? but now the question will be if this is Mubtada then where is the Khabar? the term Rajul is a Ma'rifa or Nakira? it's what? So after a ma'rifa was come, so if a nakira occurs after a ma'rifa, the tarkib is, so the tarkib of khabar will start from here, 
We'll start from here. here. Right. So Bakr is the Mubtada. Bakr is the Mubtada. We will not say that Bakr is uh, Bakr is Mawsuf al Fadil is Sifa Mawsuf. If Sifa together become Mubtada. This is not sound. This is not the way we will do the Tarkib. Why? Why is Bakr Marfu? Because it's Mubtada. Is Al Fadil Marfu? Because it's Mubtada. No. Why is Al Fadil Marfu? Because it's a Sifa for the Mawsuf. It's a Tabi. And the Tabi just corresponds with its Matbu, the Mawsuf. So this is Marfu because of its Mawsuf. Okay? So Al Fadil is the Sifa for the Mubtada, which is also a Mawsuf. Right. Rajul. Is it Marifa or Nakira? Nakira. And af if after a Marifa or Nakira occurs, what happens? Khabar. Yes? Okay, we have the Khabar. Is Salih Nakira or Marifa? So now we've had a Nakira occur after a Nakira while the Tarkibi two Nakiras come together. Mosuf and Sifa. So now tell me, is Salih Marfu because of the Khabar? Sorry, is Salih Marfu because it's a Khabar or is Salih Marfu because it's a Tabi of the Mawsuf? Yes, because it's a Sifa and a Sifa follows the Mawsuf in Arab. So this is just a Sifa for the Khabar which is also a Mawsuf. How would we read this now? How would we read this? Hamza's gone. Whose go is it? Um, who will read this? Sabil? Read. Oh, sorry, he had to go, yeah? He hasn't. He put it under Puzal. Azim. So read it to me. Okay. You read it, Bakrul Fadilu. I know why you read it, Bakrul Fadilu, because you're saying is marfu because it's a Mubtada, Al Fadilu is a Sifa. But now the question is to read it, Bakrul Fadilu, is this correct? Because this, there's Tanween on this. If you say Bakrul Fadilu, then you drop the Tanween. When there is Tanween and there's a Hamza Wasal, a Hamza which is temporary, it can be dropped. You bring something called a Noon Qutni. You bring something called a little Noon with a Kasra beneath it and you join it. Bakrunil Fadilu. Bakrunil Fadilu. Why is it Al Fadilu? Why isn't it Al Fadilun? Because there's an Alif Lam. An alif lam is mani or tanween. When an alif lam occurs, can tanween ever occur in the same word? No. When tanween occurs, can a alif lam ever occur in that word? No. So could this ever be al bakrun? No. So bakrun il fadilu. How would you translate up until here? Mosul sifa translation. What did I say when they both ma'rifah? How do you translate it? What do you? You're nodding your head. You're not answering? How do you translate it? I said when they're both Nakira, then you translate the Nakira first. Are they both Nakira? So how would you translate this? I said you bring the term who is right. Bakr, who's an expert? Bakr, you bring the term who is or who is, who is an expert or who, who's an expert. So Bakr, who's an expert? Now the Mubtada Khabar translation because the Mubtada is now is uh, coming. So how do we, what do we bring in between the Mubtada and Khabar? Is. is. So Bakr who is an expert is a... Man. Now look, Nakira and Nakira, both Mosul Sifa, what do we translate first? Sifa. The Sifa. So how would we translate this? Pious man. So Bakr who is an expert is a, is a pious man. Do you understand? Bakr, who's an expert, is a pious man. Teek, the Mubtada Khabar will become with Jumla. Jumla Ismiya. Can this sentence be declared as true or false? Yes. Yes, so is Jumla Ismiya Khabariya. Last example today. Alright, Adib in this case is an is it's a name. Adib in this case is a name. name. Hada is 
Ma'rifa, Ma which type? Adib is? Ma'rifa. Ma which type? Ma'rifa and Ma'rifa, what will the tarkib be? But remember, a name, a being can never be an attribute because attributes are attributed towards beings. So how can this be a sifa? This example is to show that if ma'rifah comes in ma'rifah, it doesn't always have to be mausul sifa, generally speaking. So remember that names, people are never attributes. People are never, attributes. rather attributes are attributed to people. So, so, this, so there's no quality being expressed about adib here. In this case, it's muqtada and khabar. Hada adibun. This is adib. Tell me hada. It's muqtada. So, in which state will it be? Where's the alamat al-raf? This is marfu mahallan. Because it's mabni and it doesn't change. This is marfu. And it's mabni ala al fatah. It's mabni. It will always have a fatah. Adibun. Why are we reading it adibun? Because it's the khabar. Because it's the khabar. Is it marfu lafzan taqdiran or mahallan? Lafzan. Because you can pronounce it. We will continue insha'Allah on Wednesday. Is everyone okay with this lesson today? Was it clear? No. Did you understand everything? No. Alhamdulillah. Is not ni'am, it's na'am. Allahu, 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 Allahu.